Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again and welcome. And uh, we are back here where we left off last time. I've crafted just a few machines uh, in preparation for what we're going to work on today, which is engine units and probably some work on advanced circuits. I can't uh, totally guarantee that we're going to uh, complete advanced circuits because they are a little bit uh, more of a complicated build, but I think we can at least get started on them. Engines are quite simple. Uh, so we finished stack inserter, uh, got that taken care of, and let's go ahead and take a look at engines. So engines uh, require steel, gears, and pipes. Uh, we have steel and gears made and on the bus already, thankfully. We should bring them over this way a little bit, though. And it does require pipes. Uh, now, pipes are something that I never put on uh, a main bus or just general production line that goes throughout my base. Uh, you certainly can if you want to, uh, but in uh, in vanilla w without modded uh, things, you you really only need them for one or two recipes. Uh, in you know th those recipes aren't something you need a lot of the the finished product from. So I tend to just make them locally, uh, much as I did with the. Uh, you know, inserters and belts here. Like, I, I don't put inserters and belts on my bus, uh, even though they are needed for science. Kind of the same thing applies with pipes. So let's cue that, pick it up with our picker tool, and I'm going to just scooch over just a little bit here, again, leaving plenty of room. And uh, if we just look at some basic ratios here, we um, can look at this and figure out uh, that we need... 12 machines, I believe, because we want one a second uh, base craft rate, uh, and these take 24 seconds, but much like the military science, uh, this outputs two chemical science for us. So we would need half that amount, uh, being 12 machines. Uh, and we need two engine units there, uh, which means we, if we have 12 machines, we basically need uh, 24 engine units, because 12 times 2 uh, every 24 seconds because the recipe is 24 seconds long. So we basically need an engine a second uh, Hopefully you followed that I, I, I had a little bit of a hard time following myself uh, Hopefully I, I think I'm correct on that and then the engine unit takes 10 seconds So again going off of base craft rate so we don't have to take into account the speed of every single uh, level of assembler we have going uh, We would need 10 of these seeing as they take 10 seconds so we're gonna Start. I think we're actually going to place blue science machines here, just because uh, if we build uh, this, if we build engines here and then red circuits here, which can actually become quite expansive uh, once you you know need a lot of production of it, then blue science ending up like over here. Uh, that's quite a ways to belt it over, and it's just a little bit out of order for the way uh, at least my brain works and likes to organize things. Uh, so I didn't really count these. Uh, one thing I want to show off here is. You can use the copy paste tool, which we haven't used a lot, but we did touch on it earlier in the series uh, when we were doing these smelters here. You can use this to quickly measure. Now, of course, you could just count these down, but if you hit Control C to get your copy tool, and uh, even if you didn't initially have it unlocked, um, you should have it about the point in the game we're at right now. Of course, this ability with what I'm about to show you just works at any point in the game. Uh, and I believe you should still be able to access the copy and paste tools with the hotkeys, even if you don't have them on this bar here, I believe. Uh, that's what some people said in the comments. I always have it unlocked, so I can't entirely confirm. Uh, but uh, you can use this as a measuring just by hitting Control-C and just measuring, just dragging over. You don't even have to complete the action. Just uh, just uh, pull, it, pull it away from here and then just let go and it won't actually create anything. So we have 11 here. Uh, we need one more because we needed 12. I'm going to start crafting some more of these. Uh, and uh, this can be a really good way to, to quickly measure things. I, you know, a lot of times I lose count or I don't count things just in general when I place them uh, just because I'm, I'm distracted with other things. Uh, you know, usually I'm streaming or recording. Uh, but that can be a really, really easy and nice way to, uh, you know, count things, measure things, uh, etc. So we're going to output here and these much like the military science need two input belts because we have three materials and uh, a belt only has two lanes 
uh, and it, you you could put all three on um, on a belt, and that is fine. Like I've said before, I mean it's fine to a degree. It, it can definitely clog up uh, the inserters and the whole process unless you do some uh, work with uh, filter and splitters or circuits, which is not something I really want to mess with. In this case, you know, I, I would just assume do two belts. It kind of just makes more sense to me to do it that way. So we are going to put two belts here on the front. Uh, you know, we could stick one on the back. It doesn't really matter that much. It's going to be the same amount of space anyway. So this is going to be one input. Uh, just share two of the materials. Uh, in this particular case, it doesn't really matter which ones go here. Uh, later on, you'll see uh, a good example, maybe something like the next one, Purple Science, for things that are needed in that, and other recipes. But one thing I will demonstrate, and I just want to quickly mention here, uh, is I like to put uh, things on the closest belt that are the highest consumed materials. So uh, let's just hypothetically say that this required, say, like six engines uh, per craft or 10 engines per craft. I would want to put this on the close belt uh, because that has the ability to do fast inserters if I want it to. Uh, or kind of with that is I may even give it its own belt. If, if this required say 10 or 12 engines per craft and one sulfur and like two circuits, hypothetically, um, what I would do is I would put the sulfur and circuits on this belt because the long hand inserters can quite easily keep up with that low amount. And then I would give engines an entire belt and uh, give them fast inserters. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind just when you are doing like two belt inputs is the things that require uh, very high consumption put on the closer belt so you have the ability to use fast inserters and additionally maybe even give them their own belt. Uh, in this case that doesn't apply because it's just a very low amount of, of all of those ingredients uh, but there are things like the uh, next pack, the purple pack, actually requires a very large amount of rail uh, train track in it which is quite interesting and, and actually pretty difficult to keep up with the demand of. So. Uh, that one I like to just give its own belt right in the front there. Uh, we don't even need fast inserters in this case. Again, very low amount for a very long craft time. Uh, so there we go. We we have these, this setup, and we'll just kind of leave that as is for the moment. It was mostly just to get spacing and to, you know, get this down uh, just kind of in our mind's eye here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and space this out just a little bit more. I think actually I'm going to go just a little bit more here, just in case we need some, to do some curves or something. Create engines on this one, and then we're going to place down all except one because we had 11 and we need 10. Uh, we can also just quickly measure by just noticing that, knowing that we have 12 here, this is too short. So go ahead and copy that, shift right click and shift left click, hold and run to get all that in there. We are going to need some more belt. And uh, this one actually, we uh, we actually do need 11 assemblers. So I got a little bit ahead of myself here. I was I was getting a little excited. So. I said I like to make pipes locally, uh, and I do this simply by just having a pipe machine at the front. So this one actually needs to be pipe, and then we'll just throw another engine on the back here. Uh, we could have added yet another pipe machine in front, but that throws off our alignment for all this and brings it uh, what I would consider dangerously close to our bus line here. So uh, we're going to get this guy going here, and then these need, of course, the uh, pipes and then gears and steel. So. Uh, I'm going to send gears and steel in right here on this side. I'm going to send pipes in on this side. And then since these only, you know, these only output one engine at a time every 10 seconds, uh, we can very safely have another belt here for our output, which actually probably will end up making a turn and coming over this way and merging with something else. Uh, but we are actually out of belt, so let's go ahead and grab some belt here. And we're just going to do as we've done with quite a few other things. We're going to bring over the steel and the gears and uh, combine them on the spot pretty easily. I'm just going to take all the belt here, in fact, and we're going to take some extra inserters. And I've not yet automated power pulls, unfortunately. I seem to be uh, putting that off. I tend to put it off. I don't know why. It's not. It's not that complicated. Copper and steel. I think a lot, I think maybe because I usually don't have copper brought over to my hub or mall. Uh, so it's just an extra step that I guess most of the time I'm too lazy to take. Uh, but let's go ahead and insert these here. 
for our one input. And then this is going to be pipes, remember. And uh, we could have certainly just put pipes on another belt here and use long-handed for that and then had an output. Again, to me, it doesn't matter very much. It takes the same amount of space as this setup. is just more, uh, you know, kind of weighed to one side. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab some iron. We can, uh, we could grab iron here, but we do need to realize this belt is actually coming from the bus. So that may interfere a little bit, uh, but I like to just grab iron right here. Output iron, uh, the pipes here, uh, and there we go. So let's bring over the iron, and uh, you know I am. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Engines, like I said, engines are actually really quite a simple recipe. Uh, so I don't, I don't feel that there's a lot of new concepts to cover here. Uh, there certainly, perhaps, will be with uh, red circuits, which we'll get into here very shortly. Uh, okay, so we have iron coming over, we need to now bring gears over, as well as steel. And we'll have to get rid of this rock here, we'll get a little bit of uh, coal and, and uh, stone from that. So, much like we've done here, we'll bring both lines over and then combine them here, rather than taking the extra space to combine them on the bus, which means we actually need to have this go about here. Uh, the, like I said, the picker tool is incredibly helpful. Uh, it, it once you get used to it, you will end up using it a lot, and it's just very convenient because, of course, most of the time you are working in your factory, uh, so you you can just use that to grab whatever you need. You can obviously combine it with your hot bar as well, and uh, in some cases it, it may be faster just to use your hot bar. Uh, however, you know you can't have every single thing on one hot bar. You would you would have to switch between the setups, um, so. Sometimes the picker tool is easier. Uh, this actually scared me for a second. I thought we had no power throughout the base. I forgot I hadn't powered this. And this should, theoretically, we could actually get this turning on just so it can kind of start working and, and building things up. Although, I, I think, did we leave off last time with a power issue? We may have. So this may just create a bit of a brownout, which could be a problem. Okay, now we actually, I think we upgraded our power for a bit. Which is, uh, which is really good. So, the way, since we have to use long handed here and it just takes that extra space, the power pole placement is unfortunately a little bit awkward. We certainly need to automate these power poles probably next episode, or maybe I'll just do it off camera even. Uh, and then this guy looks like just needs a quick power pole here. And once this starts, he will pick up. And once he gets the second pipe in there, we'll start making engines. And uh, at this stage, we just need some long-handed inserters on this build. Should have put them, uh, should have grabbed them rather from the hub while I was over there. Uh, now this, we could run up this way and have the belt going the other direction, uh, but this is probably going to share belt with something. So I do want it to uh, probably come this way. Although, yeah, I do because actually, if if we have it come up and then over like this. Uh, it makes expanding this just a little bit more difficult since we would then have to, you know, tear this up and reroute it higher up. Uh, so coming actually downwards like this uh, does not create that problem since this is the starting point here and, you know, it's not going to expand this way at all. And this is, again, due to inserter mechanics. Longhand inserters work exactly the same in the fact they will always place these on the far side of the belt. So we can safely, uh, you know, know that these engines are always going to be on that side of the belt they're on, and then we can easily merge whatever red circuits probably here, and then sulfur can connect up here. In fact, we even could connect sulfur here. Now, red circuits are a higher usage ingredient, again, but uh, in this particular case, this is such a, such a very slow craft time that it's just not relevant. But that is something I like to always keep in mind. So let's hook up sulfur here just so we have that ready to go. And I'm not entirely sure where, okay, so it looks like perhaps something like this. When you don't have all your lines brought down, at least for me, it can be a little hard to keep track of where everything runs, but I believe that is correct. Get that hooked up here. 
and let's bring our plastic down because this is now what we need for red circuit so i'm going to bring this all the way down because we know we're building these paths where we built the engines uh, i know i'm also going to need copper uh, now you may not know this uh, off the top of your head but i will show you why uh, so this needs copper and then we also need some circuits which oh my goodness this is very far away probably going to have to increase our circuit production almost certainly in fact uh, these two circuit machines have surprisingly kept us going for this long. Uh, I, I am actually quite surprised by that, probably because I keep forgetting to do research. Uh, modular armor, it's just a higher level armor, which we can actually put some special things inside the armor to give it some some better durability and give some combat options. And uh, we'll, we'll look into that once we get there. Uh, automated rail transportation, this allows us to build train stops, which are required for any automation to do with trains. Uh, and then I'm just going to queue up a bunch of stuff here. Batteries, this is something that you can put uh, in your, well, no, batteries itself is, is actually something you just make to go into recipes. Uh, it looks similar to a battery you would put into your power armor, personal battery. That's what I got it mistaken with. Looks very similar. Uh, so we do want batteries. Cue this up. That's something, it's another oil byproduct. That's what's actually going to need sulfuric acid primarily. Uh, and there we go. So now we can start building our uh, red circuits. And I think once we get all of this stuff stable, uh, not, not this episode uh, specifically, but once we get things stable, uh, I want to go around and start upgrading our machines to level 2 assembling machines. Uh, we do have the ability to make those. Um, they are just faster. You know, they're 50% they're faster going from 0.5 speed to 0.75 speed. And uh, that does make a difference for sure. Okay, so looking at red circuits, they require plastic, they require green circuits, and they also require copper cable. So uh, that's why we need the copper. They require the copper cable just like green circuits require copper cable and uh, they actually need four cable which is a decent amount it is a six second craft time uh, and the ratio for this uh, ends up being one cable machine to uh, six advanced circuit machines and we can figure that out uh, fairly simply by looking at the fact this takes six seconds and uh, requires four copper cable every six seconds um, so well, there's a few ways we can go about this um, we can just look at copper cable and every second it's going to create four right because it gives us two but then looking down there it's actually half of a second craft time so in one second uh, I just find one second like like variables of one second to be easier to calculate than than parts of a second um, in one second it gives us four cable and uh, so that actually gives us enough for one of these. But this takes six seconds, which means that uh, in six seconds, this is actually going to create six times the amount we need, right? Because one goes into six, six times. Uh, so we, we can actually support six advanced circuit machines with just one copper cable machine. And uh, we're going to do that very much like we've done the pipes here, actually. Uh, we're not going to do direct insertion now. I did uh, go a bit into why I like doing direct insertion for green circuits and why I believe I covered why you, you don't typically want to put copper cable on a belt. If I didn't cover that, I will cover it briefly here. Uh, copper cable, as we just kind of saw going through this, is a very high throughput item. It's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, four per second. Uh, so you can very quickly fill up a belt and it's not actually going to give you that much throughput uh, opposed to direct insertion because you're limited to the belt speed, whereas with direct insertion, uh, the, especially once you get inserter stack bonuses, which allow the inserters to grab more at once in their hand. Um, so you're basically transferring more per swing. Uh, it can just transfer directly from one to one. So, you know, it can just grab four, five, six items, uh, even more with stack inserters, and just dump them between them rather than relying on just the speed of a belt, uh, you know, and having it in line like this. So uh, especially for things like green circuits, I think that having cable directly inserted not on a belt is almost a must if you really want it to be expandable decently however uh, we will notice you do will notice we put cable on a belt here now there are builds that do have cable directly inserted to red circuit machines uh, but they are quite complicated and uh, for this it's not necessary to have them directly inserted just because 
it requires four every six seconds opposed to the three every half a second. That's a massive difference. And uh, the way we can build this is we're not going to have like a cable machine supporting, you know, 18 or 20 red circuit machines. We're actually going to kind of do this in little uh, like sections within the build. So we have a, a cable machine here. I'm going to set these next six to red circuits. Okay. And then what we're going to do is that I may just start with this due to our potential lack of input materials here. But uh, then what we'll do is we'll just do this again. So instead of adding more red circuit machines and hoping this one, well, knowing that it actually won't supply it, um, I'm just going to set this to a cable machine and I'm going to do the same thing again. So we're going to have a cable, six circuits, another cable, six circuits. And you'll see once I start routing this, how that's going to work. Uh, and this can actually, you know, it doesn't need a ton. It needs a respectable amount of plastic and electronic circuits, but not a lot. You know, it needs double the cable. Um, and so once you get some really good production going for your green circuits, like we have a double-sided belt here, we have some good plastic production, and you start upgrading your belts, this can actually become uh, very, very long. You know, if you're on, if you're, you, if you're producing and sending like an entire red belt of uh, green circuits and plastic into this, and, and same with copper and doing this type of setup, this uh, this could easily make it out to like here, just just a direct line of them. And uh, it's gonna get pretty crazy. You'll see, uh, you'll see how how far out this can actually expand. So uh, we're going to I'm gonna actually grab, and this is something we could have done with the pipes for sure. Uh, but this case is actually very special, or very um sorry, very important that we do it this way, because uh, as we go further, like here, there's not room in front of it to grab. Um, so we're actually going to share an input and output on the same side, but separate belts. So it's going to look just like this. This is going to be copper. In fact, we can hook that up. Okay, this is going to be copper here. And then this is going to be copper cable. And this is going to supply all of these red circuit machines here. And uh, I am going to make these bath inserters because uh, I think it really doesn't need it yet, especially with these lower level machines, but eventually it likely will. Uh, and then we can either curve this and come out, do something like this to go all the way up to the next one, or we can just stick a splitter here and then have this go forward like that. Either way is okay. It, it kind of depends. This does two different things. If you have it just curve and continue upwards, this gives basically full priority to the first one. Uh, be because you know the entire belt is passing past this first one and then anything left gets sent up here whereas the splitter uh, kind of splits it off you know separates it out a bit because just from the get-go only 50% is going to this one 50% is going up and then 50% of that is going to this one so obviously as you go up it is getting less because you're splitting it in half every single time uh, but I do think it's a little bit uh, more evenly distributed than just sending a solid line up because, you know, this, you know, it's going from 100% of this one and then whatever happens to be left to the next one and, and so on. So we'll probably end up with something like this. And then, you know, since this ends here, we'll just curve it back in there. Uh, so that's what that's going to look like. And then we're going to share a belt of plastic and electronic circuits because we only need two of each. It's the same amount throughput as copper cable. So we're going to share a belt. We do want this uh, likely on the close side here. Due to load amount, uh, low amount, we probably could get away with having it in the middle, but to be safe, I just like to have this close here. So this is going to be a combined belt of uh, circuits and plastic. And what we're going to do is, much like we set up for the green circuits here, we're actually going to mirror this on the other side. Uh, so what I can do is I'm going to hit control C to copy. I'm going to actually grab, um, actually, I think grabbing the inserters could be a problem. Just grab, I think we can actually grab the belt too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have this and then, uh, this, this actually just needs to flip, but then this will be circuits and plastic this will be 
uh, cable again here. And then uh, what we're going to do is have a belt in the middle, which is going to be our output. So you can kind of see now the game plan for this, kind of how this is going to be laid out. So we then take long hand inserters, which uh, we will need a lot of them. So I'm actually going to go grab them here at the mall. But um, we're going to have long hand inserters output these red circuits onto that middle belt there. And again, we're only outputting one every six seconds. So long handed inserter speed is more than enough. We're just gonna we're gonna grab all 50 in fact and i'm gonna grab i think all of the belt here as well and that is kind of what our red circuits are going to look like it's uh it is going to eat a lot uh, a surprising amount you know i said it doesn't take a lot but once you start building this out it does take uh you know a decent amount of green circuits and plastic this initial little uh, set of six won't won't take a uh you know, a huge amount, but it will certainly take its fair share. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this. We don't at the at this particular time, we don't need to send in two entirely separate uh, belts of circuits and plastic. Later on, we may very likely need to once we expand this a lot. Um, but for now, we can just send in one merge belt and then just split it between the two halves. And uh, we're actually going to just get this run up here right now. So let's go ahead and place that there. And we're going to merge that. And then we're going to take this, do the same type of strategy here with plastic. Try to see, okay, so right here. And theoretically, yes, this one looks off because we didn't, you know, we didn't have one coming under here. I'm going to do that. And then we're going to throw these longhanded down. And I think we're going to call this an episode very soon here. I would like to just get this finished up because, in fact, uh, once this turns on, we, we actually will have blue science. I really did not expect to have blue science built this episode. Uh, I'm not entirely sure this episode may be way, way long. Uh, but even if it is, this is a huge accomplishment, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, again, I hope I wasn't going too fast. I did, uh, I, I, I think, I, I hope I explained things decently here. And, uh, you know, once you get really, really the tough parts of blue science are the oil uh, steps, which we did last episode, and the red circuits, you know, which can, especially when you're newer to the game, like before I, you know, figured out this type of setup, oh my goodness, I was, I was very overwhelmed by red circuits and how to make things work decently. Uh, but once you kind of get something like this, and you can just copy this like so many people use this type of thing i mean the ratio remains the same regardless of what build you do unless you're playing with mods uh and the way you set it up you can do it however you want you can copy this do it your own way um i just find this very easy to remember very easy to you know use and uh this will work as soon as i connect the plastic here and uh you can kind of see this guy's going to output and this is backed up but if i were to actually purge the belt this is i want to show you I want to show you here. Um, I want to show you the beauty of ratios. Again, I don't think there's any, like you do not have to play any specific way. I think you can play um, exactly how you want to play. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these out, and I'm doing this just simply for show, I suppose. Um, let's just route this while we have a minute here. Uh, this is actually going to require a little bit. Of this this one is unnecessary but for pure aesthetics I'm going to do it uh, I want to show you just here I'm gonna just let these clear out their you know production buffer uh, but I think actually we're going to come up one more here um, ratios this is this is the uh, in my opinion this is the beauty of ratios so this is somewhat awkward here um, how is it gonna work okay I'll wrap that in a minute uh, so if we now turn this on, you can see uh, none of these guys have any circuit, any cable. Uh, they have everything else they need. So if we do this, uh, this theoretically, this may look for, for a minute like this is not enough. Um, it's going to take a minute to saturate everything. Now there may have been a few cable backed up in here. So this may look like a little extra. But if we had started this all at once, you know, and everything was going, this will actually work out exactly perfectly. 
uh, as it should. I mean, that's that's the math behind it. Uh, but actually seeing it in action, at least to me, maybe this is just me, but to me, it's extremely satisfying. So you'll see, you know, these are, uh, it's slowly making its way down. It's gonna take a little bit because uh, inserters with assemblers, this is actually a good time to touch on this. Um, they actually input two times the you know, amount of ingredients that something needs for a craft. So you'll notice there's four plastic, eight cable, and four, four circuits in there. Uh, it's enough for two crafts. And uh, this guy should finally start getting his cable, provided this is actually working as it should. And it's very slowly making its way down here, but it will get there. This one of these here should get there. And there we go. Start the craft. And then now everything should start making its way down there. And this should use things up perfectly. Uh, like this, this should craft perfectly. So if we watch this, it's done, boom, inserts right as it finishes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this one more time to close out this episode. I'll wrap that next episode or off camera. Um, but here we go, it, it won't have enough, and it finishes and boom, grabs it exactly in time. And this, this is, uh, this is why I love ratios in the game, because, because you just end up with, uh, with these type of things, uh, where it's just, it's just absolutely perfect. And, uh, I have created a slight issue, so what we're actually gonna do, I, there is some routing, but I, I changed my mind, is the last thing. Um, we can mix the speed of belts without an issue. So uh, these these red belts, as I've mentioned before, they actually have a longer reach. They have a length of seven opposed to five. Um, so this will actually reach, whereas the yellow one would not. And uh, we can just use that to reach across distances. I, I could reroute things, of course, to get it to work. Um, but basically, this won't mess anything up. It'll just kind of slingshot the items through here a little bit faster. And then they'll slow down and compress back up here. But um, just to demonstrate that. And there we go. We have red circuits built. We have engines built. In fact, we are now producing blue science. Huge accomplishment. I think so. Uh, maybe the episode was a little long. If so, I apologize for that. But I think this is well worth the extra time spent. And next episode, we will work on... Uh, we'll try to maybe start unlocking purple science. That's going to take a little bit. And uh, while we do that, we'll probably expand some production in our base. And maybe make a modular armor and look at everything to do with that. So... Uh, that should be quite fun. Probably some combat that needs to be done here soon as well. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. And uh, if you if you did, uh, a like is much appreciated. So other people can hopefully find the video in the series as well and find it helpful. Uh, and if you're new to the game, uh, welcome. I hope you're having a fantastic time with it. It's, it's really great and I hope these are helpful. And if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome and feel free to subscribe to stay up to date on all the content that's coming out with 1.0. And there is a lot of it here on the channel. And uh, as always, any questions and thoughts and feedback do leave down below and I'll do my best to read them and answer. And uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.